the University of Zurich, Lukas Pelkmans is a strong advocate of quantitative cell biology. Today we can only imagine that in the future we are able to control and change the fate of our cells, our organs and even our entire organism. But as a first step towards that direction, we need to understand how biological systems work, how they generate complexity. This is exactly the aim of the Systems X initiative, to move away biological research focusing on a single molecule such as DNA or protein towards research that tries to study multiple molecules together such as DNA, protein and also many other components. How they together generate complexity and how from that complexity properties emerge that could not have been emphasized without looking at the whole picture. To understand what Lucas Pelkmans means, let's think for a minute of the human body as a termite nest. Just like the human body, this mound is one of nature's highly complex inventions. Its sophisticated structure protects it from hostile weather and enemies. Inside, different spaces are dedicated to raising larvae storing food, hosting the queen, and the corridors are exactly the right size in order to be both accessible and easy to defend. Now, if we were to focus on an isolated termite, no matter how carefully you look at this single insect, you will never be able to figure out this. Pretty much as we can understand many details of the physiology of a single termite, we can understand a lot about a single gene and its product. But this one gene can have a pronounced effect in one person without having any effect in another person. It all depends on its specific context. And for this reason, we need to understand how genes interact within the complex system of a single cell. We need to understand the whole system to understand the functioning of a single gene. What is very interesting is that doing systems biology also means taking chance into consideration. Chance can play a role in why and how a cell lives its life, or dies, or becomes ill. The good news is that in spite of this chance of these probabilities, we can still predict the outcome of molecular processes, or control the fate of individual cells, predict illness or the reaction to a drug, in order to achieve that, however, we need to integrate huge amounts of quantitative data. Fortunately, today we have unprecedented computational tools and technologies, and we can carry out experiments, thousands of experiments, simultaneously. <laughs> 